Well, I guess it was grade four or five at elementary school. Uh, one of the sports you could try out for, and I tried out for every sport, and I fell in love with it, and uh, continued to play volleyball all the way through uh, elementary school and high school. Um, back then, I'm old, so back then there wasn't really any club teams. There was one club team around, so I didn't really know about it. I was a hockey player, so I was always playing hockey, and in the summer I was always playing soccer or something, so that's some other sport. But uh, really enjoyed volleyball at high school. I had a really good coach, and uh, I really loved sports, and I started coaching back in grade 11, helping out with the junior team, and really fell in love with that as well, and realized that uh, that was something I enjoyed, and so I continued to coach when I went to university and started taking on head coaching jobs at high school, my old high school. Uh, <clears throat> even worked with the Gigi's one year with Al Jeffries, which I learned a lot from. So it was a great experience and from there I just uh, stayed in the sport of volleyball and got in teaching and realized there was really no opportunity for girls to play any club volleyball or go beyond what uh, high school. So uh, Reg Young and I we were working together at the time and uh, he was big official with the uh, OVA. So we put together and we created the Gurus club team and it, it was a West End team or West End club to match what was being offered with the Mavericks in the East End. So we did a really good job because what we did is we, we put together a real good board that was in it for all the right reasons and had a lot of experiences in other sports on being on boards. <clears throat> so we put together a good policy uh, constitution, a policy procedures, um, we established a good financial with a good treasurer, <clears throat> bookkeeping was well done. So we made sure that the administration was well done so that coaches could coach and didn't have to worry about all the other administrative stuff. So we created the parent manager concept and, and how that would work and their roles and responsibilities to make sure there was training for those parents so they understood how to do it. So I think we did a really good job of establishing it at the beginning. So it made the coaches' jobs easy. Before coming back to the Fusion and coming back to coach at the club level, I would have been doing uh, learning facilitating and doing uh, coaching clinics for Module A and Module B and all that's about LTAD. So I was really bought into the concept of athlete development and, and that there's a process and there's certain windows of trainability and all that concepts and I was preaching that to coaches and I thought, well, you know, if you're going to preach it, you better be able to walk the talk. So when I came back to the Fusion, because it was my son's age at 13U, said I'll come in and, and coach and then my concept is I want to follow this LTAD model and uh, make sure it, and walk the talk. And uh, so I saw, I told the parents that came in that this is my plan, this is what the LTAD says we need to do and this is what we I want to want to do with your kids. And so they, uh, the parents bought into it. Here in Ottawa we don't have a lot of uh, male athletes playing volleyball so there's not really a big um, concern about a lot of players moving around and stuff like that. We, I mean, we did have players change. We did have some players come over from the Mavericks, and that usually what happens here. By A17 and 18U, the, at the boys level, they, they collapse into one team. So they, for the high performance athletes. Uh, so for the most part, we had our core eight, eight, six, and eight guys uh, that followed the LTAD model all the way through, and. Uh, it seems to work out because most of them are playing either playing a university level of volleyball or now coaching. So to me, that is a sign of success and that the model does work. Yeah, so SportsCan started uh, way back in '96, I think, when we uh, started just running um, volleyball camps for those athletes that are looking to play university ball. That was the concept. So we did a lot of one-on-ones, uh, working on just technique, technique, technique throughout the summer where, because in most times during club time, you don't have time to work intensively on, on technique. You have to focus a little more on technical, or sorry, tactical. So we started with that and then it just grew uh, with the Jeff and I working together on it. And it's just grown into something now that we feel is a great uh, program in terms of creating that balance between uh, development and uh, opportunities for athletes to develop their skills and, and get ready for the competitive season. We've, uh, we've mixed in with the beach program and we've mixed in uh, indoor where you focus on just your technical training, individual technical training, there's no tactics to it. Uh, it's, you know, it's high volume, low intensity for the most part, a lot of mental. So we use a lot of video analysis in it so that the athlete really understands their technique and how to make it most efficient. Uh, and we run it uh, all summer or for six, seven weeks in the summer so that they have lots of time for muscle development. And that's the biggest thing about one week camps is they're great uh, for motivation and for learning. But if, if you walk away from that within 72 hours, any muscle development, any neuromuscles 
development you've done goes away. So if you don't practice what you've learned, you don't really benefit as much as you can as if you're practicing on a regular basis. So the amount of interest in, in volleyball has uh, exponentially grown for sure. Um, then also the training methodology is definitely trained. We never talked about uh, physical conditioning, nutrition was mentioned but never really focused on mental training skills. Uh, we, we were unique because we would do goal setting. Now that's a foregone conclusion. You have to, you know, team goals, individual goals, um, your focus, breathing rates, uh, nutrition. I mean, if you go to any OVA tournament now, it's just it's all healthy foods. I mean, every athlete's eating healthy. You don't see anyone running the McDonald's anymore, or even like we would run the subway, and people thought we were strange for doing that because that was healthier than what most people are used to. So, without question, it's changed. And the direction, I would say. Uh, it's, it's really providing opportunities for high, athletes that really wanted to become high performance athletes or play at the next level. There's opportunities for them to start getting the necessary touches for sure. Um, also, it's growing in size, so I think what's going to happen is there'll be a lot more opportunities for youth to play recreation or, or less competitive volleyball, and so less uh, the time demands, uh, and, but still play and still have a, enjoy the sport because we know that uh, Volleyball at, at the adult level is, is the biggest social, one of the biggest social sports out there. Yeah, I, I think the key is, and in, in I've, I've looked at this from different sports with my nephews and and, uh, and just watching elite athletes come and go. The key is a passion. If you love something, you've got to live, breathe it every single day. And you know, there's a there's a motivational video out there. You've got to want it as much as you want to breathe. And when you're at that point, then that's how you're going to become the best because you're not going to take a day off. You're not going to take a rest because you want it so bad. So this, it's really to, de to decide what you're passionate about and go get it. And that doesn't mean it has to be volleyball. It doesn't have to be sports. It could be art, school, whatever. But find your passion and just go after it, whatever it is.